Hey Lawiners, it's Lawai86 here with another video. I actually put up a Patreon poll. Uh, guys voted on my last topic, which I covered, but this topic got second place in the votes. Uh, so if you want to vote on videos, don't forget patreon.com slash 86 But today's video is all about Hollywood censorship within China and also within the US. Now how this all started was, back in the day, Communist China obviously didn't allow Western influence films to even appear on its shores. They didn't want their brainwashed populace, you know, especially under Mao's rule, to consume Western media. Same thing happened in the Soviet Union. They pretty much blocked everything or they had a censorship board that allowed certain things in. The problem is, China slowly kind of opened up a little bit more and more and more, and the taste for Western films was insatiable. So instead of having a full blanket ban on, you know, American movies from Hollywood, they allowed 34 foreign films from different countries around the world every year to be played in Chinese theaters. Now the issue was, if they were to show these films, the filmmakers would have to make a separate version, cutting out the things that the Chinese government deemed inappropriate. Usually this covered things like anything that criticizes communism or the government or anything like this or anything that portrays China as a villain or portrays China as poor. Um, oftentimes it would be banning things like sex scenes, nudity, things like that is totally unacceptable in China. They pretend like they're prudes, but they're really not, trust me. Now that's pretty immoral, you know, to begin with for a Western company or an American Hollywood company to take out scenes that are deemed inappropriate within a certain country. But that's kind of how the market works. If you want to enter the Chinese market, let's say you're a car manufacturer, 51% of your company has to be a partnership with a Chinese company. So that's why you see something like Haudria Suzuki. That means that Haudria, the Chinese company, owns 51% of the company, but they get to work together with Suzuki to make a domestic product. They get the quality control from Japan, um, but they also kind of get the cheap manufacturing labor and stuff and the, the huge benefit of having the majority ownership uh, within China. That's how companies need to operate in China and Hollywood is no different, right? The problem is, is that it's gone from censoring for China to censoring in America before it goes into Chinese theaters for the domestic American audience. So you're seeing films like Top Gun is a great example. Top Gun, uh, if you watch the original movie, Tom Cruise is wearing a jacket which has a patch that represents Taiwan. Uh, Taiwan being a territory, an actual country, that China claims as their own, when in fact it's not. Now, the reason that patch was on there was because of the Pacific tour. And basically, when the aircraft carrier would go around the Pacific Ocean, everywhere that they would land or, or get off at, that was a new patch. So Taiwan became a new patch for that, that jacket. If you watch the remake, they actually removed the Taiwan patch and replaced it with just nonsensical bullshit. And that was to capitulate to the Chinese government, who cannot tolerate the idea that anyone would think that Taiwan is a free democracy. In fact, it is under the control of the People's Republic of China. So that's a really good modern example of something that changed for the American audience. So the Americans have to see that. That's not, not just for the Chinese audience. They also removed the Japanese flag because that was part of the Pacific tour as well, because China hates Japan. And, you know, rightfully so for some reasons of historical value, but it's, it's not pertinent to today's international relationships. It's just capitulating to a butthurt country that doesn't want its populace to see something that goes against their brainwashing narrative. A hilarious version, and perhaps the most extreme version, is not even something like a, a political in nature. Christopher Robin's Winnie the Pooh movie was actually just not allowed to be shown in China. And the funny thing is, is that a ton of money went into marketing for China. It is a very safe movie. Why would you ban Winnie the Pooh? Well, everybody knows that it is illegal to compare the president, or sorry, president, the chairman of China, Xi Jinping, to Winnie the Pooh because he does bear an, a resemblance. If I was Xi Jinping, I would have owned that. But instead, they literally airbrushed like Winnie the Pooh out of advertisements for things. They ended up not being able to show that film because Winnie the Pooh is in it. And the Chinese government is so scared that people would make a mockery out of this that they just completely outright banned the movie and, and banned any comparison of, you know, making a comparison of uh, Xi Jinping to Winnie the Pooh. Hilarious and absolutely insane, but that's how crazy it actually gets. Back in 2000, I believe it was 2010, there was a remake of the movie Red Dawn. And if you don't know this, the original Red Dawn movie, the plot is that the Soviet Union wins and they overtake the US. So it's kind of like an interesting thought experiment of what the US would be like under communist Soviet leadership. They made a remake of it 
And I was super pumped to find out they were gonna make it about communist China taking over the US. Now the funny thing is they actually started the set, the set makeup, the set dressings and stuff, and they started filming it. And it was promoted with the, uh, what's it called? The, the film poster that says Ba Yi, which is the Chinese military. And they really went to meticulous detail. I mean, the movie ended up sucking, but the amount of de the level of detail that they went into to actually make it look like Chinese propaganda in the US, it's amazing. If you've ever been to China, this is what modern day Chinese propaganda looks like around the country. So you see the US flag with the Ba Yi on it. You see the, all the propaganda posters. It's very Chinese, but they were so terrified that China was gonna like basically throw the hammer at them and say, F you, we're never gonna buy your movies again. That the film studio had to change it from China to North Korea. I read this interesting article at one point talking about how Russian people ended up becoming the notorious villains in all these American movies. And that's because of the bad blood with the Soviet Union. So it's kind of the, the stereotype. If there's a villain in a movie, of course he's from Mother Russia, you know? That's like the, the bad blood remnants of the bad blood the US used to have with the Soviet Union. He said that, I can't remember who read this article, but he said that if you start seeing American movies portraying a certain country as a villain, that means that international relations are very bad between the two countries. North Korea and America have terrible relations. And North Korea is a very safe common enemy. Whereas China, there's too much risk at damaging that market. So they basically revamped the entire thing. Movie ended up being shit. Now China has a massive taste for vapid, action movies. That's why Transformers was so damn popular there. And actually in 2012, uh, the James Bond movie Skyfall, they had to remove any references to Macau, which is now a Chinese territory. It used to be Portuguese. Um, they were referring to Macau and prostitution. So they thought that made China look bad. And also there were some references to Chinese police uh, torturing prisoners, which does happen quite often. Uh, so they had to remove that. To go back to 2007 and Pirates of the Caribbean, you know, the famous uh, actor Chow Yun-Fat, he basically had all of his lines removed. And that's ridiculous because it was kind of initially promoted as, holy crap, there's a real Chinese person in this very famous Hollywood movie. Chinese people are getting screen time. It's awesome. Everyone was super pumped about it. But then when you watch the movie, you'll actually see that most of his lines have been removed, I believe for the Chinese version, because Chow Young Fat, as a Chinese person, couldn't be portrayed as a pirate because pirates are bad. And that negative connotation, just the, the government couldn't deal with that. They thought it made China lose face. In Mission Impossible 3, back in 2006, I love this one, they actually cut out a chase scene because it was in Shanghai and there was underwear hanging up. And they thought that made China and Shanghai look like a poor country because people hang up their underwear. Guess what? People do hang up their underwear. And the funny thing is, is all this stuff that's getting censored is just the truth, right? They don't want people to see what China actually looks like. Who cares if there's underwear hanging up on the clotheslines outside? Because that's really what happens in China. If you fast forward to 2013, there's a movie called World War Z, uh, where apparently some zombie apocalypse type of situation, not really interested in that genre, but it breaks out from China. So they had to completely revamp it. It couldn't be from China because definitely no plague or pandemic or zombies could ever come from China, right? <laughs> Jesus. This is the most violent sneeze I've ever heard in my life. What's that? I don't know. Neighbor. It's, like a, <laughs> it's like a bear. <laughs> anyway. Um, okay, so Star Wars, The Force Awakens, I love this. <laughs> this is not censorship on the American side. This is for the movie poster. They actually, they removed Chewbacca completely and they made the stormtroopers bigger and have more emphasis on them. <laughs> so if anyone's ever watched Star Wars and not been able to make the comparison between the Empire and the Chinese government, you gotta just, it's as a thought experiment, watch Star Wars again and tell me the Empire is not literally exactly the same as the Chinese government. It's exactly the same. So they gave more focus. And actually my friend and I were talking about this. I'm starting to, I was getting skeptical. I was like, why would they ban, like why would they not ban Star Wars in China? Cause it's clearly like these ragtag rebels that are fighting against oppression and dictatorship. And he was saying, maybe a lot of people in China see it the other way. They're like, look at how powerful and, and successful the empire is. <laughs> it's kind of how things are, are seen in China as well. But the funniest part of that is they took, <laughs> They took the black guy in the movie and they made him tiny and moved him down. And it, the funny thing, people can try to defend this all the time, but China has got to be one of the most racist countries I've ever seen in my entire life. 
And they'll always deny it, and they'll call Americans racist or all this kind of shit and try to promote this idea that there's no racism within China. But it's just so blatantly racist. Because people, Chinese people, a lot of them, especially the older generation, will be turned off if they see a black person on the, the, movie, on the movie poster. Which is insane. So I don't know if you guys remember this movie, Looper. This is really interesting. There was a leaked email uh, from a Chinese investor board that was investing in the movie. And in order for this movie, I actually watched this movie in China. In order for this movie to be accepted for the Chinese market, they had to change the line. Because there's this dude that says he's going to um, move to France. But the guy from the future says, don't go to France, go to China. And the guy says, oh, I want to move to Paris. I'm learning French, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, no, trust me, I'm from the future, go to China. Now, this line wouldn't be too controversial, but it was actually leaked in the email that the investor board forced them to put this line in the movies for it to be accepted in China. So that's a really good example of a narrative for the American audience was changed as well, just to capitulate to China, to make it look like the place the place to be and you've noticed in like other science fiction movies China is now portrayed as like uh, the future tech innovator the future of, of the world is in China because look at all their infrastructure and technology and stuff without ever mentioning the fact that all of that technology was stolen IP theft but anyway I digress my point is like all of these all of these little examples and stuff are influencing the whole market so Plot lines are being rewritten just to make China happy, just to make the Chinese government happy, to make China look like this absolute bastion of the future. It's an amazing thing. Look at how good the Chinese government is. To the point where you're getting movies like Pixels, where aliens shoot a hole in the Great Wall of China, but they didn't get told off by China. They went back and watched the footage and they were like, you know what? We probably shouldn't blow up the Great Wall because that's going to piss off China. So they changed the entire scene to where they blow up the Taj Mahal instead. Because screw India, right? China's much more important, apparently. Now, all these examples lead me to a solution. We definitely cannot have our entertainment industry completely warped by a communist country just because a huge corporation is so damn greedy that they're willing to change actual intellectual material and entertainment material to capitulate and to sell to an oppressive government that only bolsters their power. So you see things like Mulan, with the actress in Mulan, I believe she's an American citizen, spoke out against the Hong Kong protests. She spoke out against democracy, and that's why you see democracy-loving Chinese people boycotting the movie. To them, it's a slap in the face that these Chinese people that are fighting for freedom and democracy, and they're trying to make change within China or the Chinese community, have this hugely influential Chinese person telling the Western world that the Hong Kong protests are bad and that democracy is a joke and that she doesn't support that. That's a huge slap in the face to freedom-loving Chinese people. So you can boycott movies like that. And you can also do your research, find out what movies and what uh, studios are actually capitulating to China because it's saturated now. Hopefully with this whole shift uh, in dealing with China, when more and more of their human rights abuses and tragedies and all this kind of terrible stuff that's happening within the borders of China and their influence around the world, now that that's being exposed more and more, I think people will be more savvy to this kind of thing. But um, I hope this video helped and maybe you can make better purchasing decisions in the future as well. Because honestly, it's to the benefit of Chinese, Chinese people in China that they don't have to consume censored, hand-picked material that's been completely warped and changed just so it appeases their bloody dictatorship. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget, every single Wednesday you can watch another one of my videos. Uh, every Friday you can watch Serpent ZA, just in time for a beer. Um, and every Monday you can watch ADV China, that's our motorcycle talk show on two wheels where we ride around the world and talk about stuff. Every other Thursday, we got our podcast, which is our long-form China content. And don't forget, every single Tuesday, I really broke that up. It's really confusing, isn't it? Every single Tuesday, you can watch Worthless Whips, which is our car channel. It's awesome. We pick up cheap cars, but we make them cool. And we flip them. We take them on trips, do tests. It's really fun. If you guys enjoy our dynamic, I think you'll enjoy the channel. Thank you so much, Law Winners, and I'll catch you on the next one.